Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this 12 game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. It's going to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and all that fun stuff. And I will continue to be working hard on these videos, putting out videos as much as possible. I'll try to do them daily throughout the whole MLB season to help you guys become better MLB DFS players and help you guys win some money. If you are interested, I do offer some further content, premium content link below in the description. You get access to some of my starting feature data sheet that you see on the screen behind me, and then a lot more things like hot header stack guys data, splits leaderboards, team hitting data, bullpen data, power rankings, and my cheat sheet. Um, then direct access to me, ask me any questions in the Discord and or my Google Sheets. You can always chat it up in there uh, where all my tools are featured. So don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day. It's a segment I do on this channel. Every single day, I'm going to give you my home run call of the day. Um, leave me some feedback in the comments. So yesterday, Bryce Harper was my home run call of the day in that game. He ended up not playing, and I'd like for there to be an alternative after my video is complete for you guys to still get a home run call for me. I don't know the best way that you would prefer, so if you could leave me some feedback down below in the comments on that. like I could always uh, put my new home run call as a pinned comment on the YouTube video. I can tweet it out over there on Twitter, um, but I'd like some feedback on what you guys would prefer for, for me to do to get that word out to you guys if that case happens, so I can still give you guys a, a home run call every day. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this one today. As always, we're going to go ahead and sort my sheet by K rate. It's fantasy sports. We get points for strikeouts to figure out the best pitchers that we're going to want to play on today's slate, and the top guy on the slate today by far is going to be Jacob deGrom taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Arguably the best pitcher in the league. This guy's been absolutely dominant for so long. Now a 35% K rate, 17.6% swing strike rate, a 37.2% K rate against righties, and then a 32.2% K rate against lefties. Just absolutely dominant across the board. And he gets a matchup against St. Louis, which isn't exactly the best one. But it's good enough for Jacob DeGrom because he is who he is. He's DeGrom. He's just absolutely disgusting. The St. Louis Cardinals come in with a 2.64 implied run total. Not even expected to score three, and that just goes to show you how much respect Vegas is going to have for DeGrom in this one. And then you factor in that it's in St. Louis as, how, as far as how that pans out as a pitcher's ballpark in Bush Stadium. It's pretty respectable. There's a lot of red and yellow going on in the map. Not exactly the best hitter's park, so I think it's a good pitching environment for him as well. And looking at the weather, is expected to be about 57 degrees with wind blowing in from left um, at about 14 miles an hour so. He's 12.5 on FanDuel over on DraftKings. They got him priced at 11.1. And for very good reason, the guy's going to be worth it um, if it's at all possible to be getting him in your lineup construction. If you're willing to, you know, play the bats alongside him, he's going to be well worth it. Second on the list, we got Danielson Lamette taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, a little bit of a disclaimer on him. He's coming back off an injury, and I don't think he's going to be fully ready to throw a full allotment of pitches. If he was, this is a spot we'd really like him. He has a 34.4% K rate overall, 36.4% K rate against righties, and then a 32.7% K rate against lefties. Very good, but the problem is he's coming off an injury. Um, and if he's going to be indeed the one... First of all, it's not even guaranteed that he's the one that's going to take the mound. So this has been uh, something that's been um, going on the last couple of days with him because he's expected to return from injury. It's up in the air whether he's going to actually start. Um, there's also a possibility that it could be Ryan Weathers. Um... So both Weathers and Lamette were able to complete their side sessions, leaving both in the mix to start Tuesday's game against the Padre, the Pirates for the time being. Um, so yeah, it's going to be one of those guys. Weathers, more of a lefty, still a really good pitcher. Uh, Lamette, also a good pitcher against righties. But I think both these guys are going to result in us not having interest in the Pirates as bats and not having interest in them as arms because they're going to be limited in uh, you know how deep they can go into the game. Shane McLannan taking on the Los Angeles Angels is a team that really doesn't strike out a lot. We've only seen this guy pitch about four innings uh, as far as how deep he went in the game and everything. Uh, looking at his game log, he pitched four innings, five Ks, um, 59 pitches, still not that deep. And as mentioned, the Angels don't really strike out a lot. So he's a guy that I'm not really looking to go to. Trevor Bauer and Adbert Alzola, you can see I have them highlighted in orange. That's because they're only going to be featured on the DraftKings slate today, and that's going to be the second game um, of the day. So I think it's going to be a, a seven-inning game, so that could be cut. Uh, so for you guys playing over there on DraftKings, you're going to have to make that decision yourself. Obviously, Trevor Bauer is an elite talent. He has a really high K rate. He's taken on a Chicago team that strikes out a lot. I would definitely have some interest in him. Um, based upon his price tag, he's priced, well, 
They don't even have him featured as a probable pitcher yet. So, oh yeah, they do. Sorry, ten seven. Right below Jacob Degrom. Um, probably gonna have a hard time paying ten seven for. I don't know. That's a tough call. The, the Cubbies strike out a lot more than uh, the Cardinals do, but there's a possibility that Bauer could be like somewhat limited in this one. And that's something you're just gonna have to decide yourself on. Like, I'm not gonna be the one to tell you not to play him or to play him. You just have to know the circumstances with these these back to backs in this year and the, the the rules and everything as far as the seven innings are concerned. If the game's gonna be seven innings, obviously you're not gonna get as much upside out of the bats in that game, and the, the pitcher could also be a little bit questionable. And you know, looking at the the straight up stats as far as how he figures against hitters and everything, Trevor Bauer is amazing. He has a really high K rate. The, the matchup's great against Chicago. Uh, Alzale has a great K rate as well, but he's taking on a Dodgers team that's a really good lineup. Probably not looking to go there. Moving on to guys that are on both slates, Aaron Nola taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. He's going to be the next guy that I really like um, outside of Jacob Degrom because he has a 28.2% K rate, 11.7 swing strike rate, 28.8% K rate to righties, and then a 27.5% K rate to lefties. And he's taking on a Milwaukee Brewers team that has been striking out a ton. It's been a team that I really like to target, uh, and I'm definitely going to have some interest in playing. Um, some Aaron Nola tonight. Looking at the Vegas lines, he comes in as a 176 favorite. Uh, so his team's expected to get the win in this one for sure. And then, um, you know, as mentioned, just great stuff. And he gets a great matchup taking on a Milwaukee Brewers team. Looks like the weather could be a little bit iffy in this one. It's mid-70s. He is in Philadelphia, which is in the best uh, pitcher's ballpark. But he's expected to go out there and get the job done. And I'm definitely going to have some interest in him with, with his talent in this particular matchup. Next on the list, we got Domingo Herman taking on the Houston Astros, another team that really doesn't strike out. He has a 25.2% K rate overall, a 26.2% K rate against righties, and then a 24.5% K rate against lefties. Is a guy that I do like to target at times when he's in a you know a heavy K matchup because he's pretty you know solid across the board. Nothing too crazy that pops up the page, but can really get the job done if he has the the proper matchup. Unfortunately, I don't think this is the one uh, taking on the Houston Astros in Yankee Stadium. Not the best pictures ballpark, and the Houston Astros just really don't strike out a ton. Um, so Herman's not going to be the guy that I'm not, that I'm all that interested in. Mitch Keller taking on the San Diego Padres. The same rule applies to him. Pretty decent K rate against righties, but a team that doesn't strike out a lot. Um, and so that's when things start to honestly kind of drop off. You got Granky taking on the New York Yankees in Yankee Stadium. They do have a tendency to strike out a lot, but that's kind of a scary thing to be doing with a guy that allows the ball to be put in place so much, um, in a pretty hitter-friendly ballpark. Do I think he's a viable play? Like, yes. Like, he comes in as a plus-104 underdog. Um, he's 8-4 on FanDuel as far as DraftKings is concerned. They have him priced at 9-2. Um, and I do think that you could target these Yankees in tournaments because they, even though they have a lot of power and stuff, they do strike out uh, quite a bit. So if you want to go there, I wouldn't call you crazy. I would much rather go to Nick Pavetta, take it on the Detroit Tigers. Comes on the 22% carry overall, 10.1 swing strike rate. A 22.5% carried against righties, and then a 21.4% carried against lefties. Can be a little wild, but we've seen these Tigers provide us with a matchup that we need time in and time out. It looks like it's going to be 48 degrees in Fenway. Great pitching environment as far as weather's concerned, with six mile an hour winds blowing in. And more importantly, it's just the matchup. He comes in at 8-3 on FanDuel over on DraftKings. They got him priced at 7-9. And these Tigers have been striking out a ton. I think they're going to be a great team to target. And then when you factor in the pitching weather in Fenway today, that just makes me like him even more. So I think Pavetta is a great option on this slate today. Um, and then you got Jay Happ taking on the Texas Rangers, another team we've really been targeting a lot, like Texas, Detroit, um, Milwaukee, Chicago Cubs. Those are all teams on the slate. The Seattle Mariners, the Baltimore Orioles, um, all teams that I've really been targeting as far as pitching is concerned. And so... While these might not be the best top tier pitchers taking on these opponents, I mean, they have decent enough stuff to where they're catching my eye. So that's where we're going down this list on. You know, you might see Jay Happ have that red on my sheet as far as K rate is concerned, but if he has a 20.3% K rate overall, a 19.5% strike or K rate against right handed hitting, and a 22.7% K rate against lefties. And that's what really sticks out to me. He's really good against left handed hitting. This Texas team is very left handed heavy, and they strike out a ton to left handed pitching. So when you factor in all this stuff, uh, it's looking like a pretty decent matchup for Jay Happ. They are going to throw in as many righties as they possibly can in this lineup against the lefty. Still doesn't scare me. They're all righties that strike out a bunch. And like I said, Jay Happ has a decent enough strikeout K rate against right-handed hitting that we can go to a 19.5% K rate. That's not going to get you all juiced up and excited in a typical matchup. But in this one, I think it, it can. Um, and I think he's a viable play. And then, of course, Jorge Lopez has been terrible all year long. It's 
tough to be able to really promote him, but he's taking on Seattle. You could play him. And then uh, Justin Dunn, the same rule applies to him. Like, these are guys... I think I'd be more willing to play Jorge Lopez than Justin Dunn, just because Justin Dunn doesn't seem to strike anyone out. But honestly, you're, you're kind of getting scary going to either of those guys. So let's just go ahead and move on to bats. Um, transition over here. I'd like to short my sheet by Sierra. Skill in our active ERA. And the worst on the slate is going to be Justin Dunn. Take it on the Baltimore Orioles, as mentioned. Terrible in the K rate. Terrible in the swing strike rate. Terrible in the ground ball rate. Fly ball rate. Walk rate. Hard contact. Does a pretty good job against right-handed hitting as far as slugging giving up. But against lefties, he has some major issues. So we're definitely going to have some interest in the left-handed bats that take the field for the Baltimore Orioles. Most notably, Cedric Mullins, uh, DJ Stort, Freddie Galvis, Rio Reese, all those lefties. Um, I'm going to have some interest in I have some interest in the righties as well if you're stacking them up. No issues with going to those righties. Um, got, the sky just doesn't scare me as far as targeting him. Next, we've got Johan Oviedo taking on the New York Mets. He's been pretty bad overall. We have 34 innings pitch sample size at this point. He's got a 439 slugging given up to right hand hitting, a 357 slugging given up to lefties. Overall, just hasn't really been striking anyone out. Has been struggling more so against right hand hitting than left hand hitting, but has been pretty, you know, below average across the board. He hasn't really been doing that great. This New York Mets lineup is pretty cold. They have been famous for not scoring any runs for Jacob DeGrom. Um, but I mean, you don't get much better of a spot than this. The hitting weather could be better, but this guy just really hasn't been that good. Jeff McNeil, Francisco Lindor, Michael Conforto, Pete Alonzo, Dominic Smith. Like this lineup is going to get hot at some point. They have a lot of talent. Um, and I would compare them to like the Yankees who we were dealing with struggling early on and letting you down over and over again. Uh, but eventually they're going to snap out of it. Um, and this could be a good spot for them too. So I have no issues with the Mets stack today. Joe Ross taking on Atlanta. Similar rule applies to him. Really bad across the board. The hard contact's been decent, but still gives up a 453 slugging to righties and then a 461 slugging to lefties. Definitely worse against lefties. Not really the greatest numbers against righties either, though. Uh, and this Atlanta Braves lineup more specifically just has a ton of talent. So when you're taking on a guy that really doesn't strike anyone out, really doesn't scare you all that much. They're on the road in Washington. They have a 4.5 implied run total. They're going to get that ninth inning at bat no matter what. And uh, the Washington Nationals bullpen doesn't really scare me either. So Acuna, Freeman, Ozuna, Albies, Dansby Swanson, Austin Riley, all those guys I'm going to have some interest in tonight for sure. No issues with the Atlanta Braves stack. Michael Fulmer taking on Boston. Hard contact, all the stuff across the board, bad once again. More specifically, this guy is just terrible against righties. He gives up a 7-10 slugging with a 473 Woba over the last two years. Like, that is scary bad. Uh, and it's lefties, he's actually been really good. A 330 slugging. 285 Woba. For some reason, he's really been able to limit those lefties, but against righties, he's just been really struggling. He is a right-handed uh, pitcher himself, so it's not like he's a lefty that's really struggling against those righties. Uh, he's just a reverse splits guy, and that's going to make me have a ton of interest in J.D. Martinez tonight for sure and Xander Bogarts in the middle of this order. Both guys can mash. Um, as mentioned in Fenway, not the greatest hitting weather tonight, but I mean, we're talking a 7-10 slugging given up, guys. That's really bad. So uh, J.D. Martinez and Xander Bogarts are going to be in really good spots here. Enrique Hernandez at the top of the order. And then, of course, I really have no issues with going to Christian Vasquez, Bobby Dalback, Hunter Renfro. They all have power. And you can round out your stacks with Rafael Devers and Alex Verdugo. Um, I know for Rafael Devers looking at my hot header stack has data tools that I provide on Patreon has looked really, really good. A lot of barrels happening for him from his bat early on in the season. So he's been hot. Eric Lauer taking on the Philadelphia Phillies, a guy that's been really less than impressive. A 41.4% hard hit rate, ground ball, five ball stuff's all really bad, and he does really struggle against both sides of the plate. A 407 slugging up to righties, a 515 slugging given up to lefties. We do prefer to target him with right-handed bats because he's a lefty just overall, but I mean, the lefties have been successful off him as well. Sounds, if it's bright, sounds as if Bryce Harper might miss this game again. If Bryce is in, he's a guy I love playing against left-handed pitching because he actually hits lefties really well, and he's a left-handed bat himself, and people always get scared to play him. Uh, so if you watch my content, I'll let you know on a little secret there. Bryce Harper against lefties is a thing. You can get him at lower ownership, and he does match left-handed pitching as well. So I like Bryce Harper. If he's in the lineup, I don't think he's going to be. But if he is, I, I like him. And then overall, if Bryce is in the lineup, I'm still going to like this lineup. Uh, Andrew McCutcheon, Reese Hoskins, Alec Bohm. JT Real Muto, D. Gregorius, all these guys can hit at the top of the order. They get a great matchup in Lauer, and the Milwaukee bullpen um, will have to come in behind him. If he gets blown up early, they're not going to be throwing out the best arms there out of the bullpen. So, uh, you know, definitely have some interest there. Vivetta taking on Detroit. He, uh, as I mentioned, he has some hard contact issues, but he can get some decent amount of K rate. 
And uh, you can play the Detroit Tigers. I mentioned I'm probably going to have interest in pitching Pavetta. has looked pretty decent overall, and the Detroit Tigers have just been really bad. But, um, you know, for that reason, no one's going to play them. And Pavetta does have, give up a lot of hard contact. So I wouldn't call you crazy if you want to play some Detroit Tigers uh, bats tonight. That's going to come into more of a pitch data decision for me. Whenever I'm in the situation, I'll dig into the pitch data. The team really bashes the guys just throws a sinker 50% of the time. And the team really bashes the sinker. You know, I'll wave the flag and play the, the weaker team. But uh, until I get confirmation and really t take a deeper dive on that later in the day, I won't be able to fully convince myself to go there. I'd rather be playing Nick Pavetta at the pitcher position. Jay Happ taking on Texas. Not really interested in, in targeting him all too much except for with the right-handed bats. So as mentioned, Texas is going to combat that, combat his numbers with the right-handed bats as much as they can. There are 11 mile an hour winds blowing out, so this could be an interesting spot. You can play the Texas bats as well. I have some interest in Jay Hat, but maybe an Isaiah Kinner for fella, Nick Solak, Adolis Garcia, Jose Trevino stack that you can get a little lower. Um, once again, a situation you can play both sides there. Uh, Mitch Keller taking on the San Diego Padres. I wasn't really interested in pitching him. He does give up quite a bit of slugging to the right-handed side and the left-handed side of the plate, and the San Diego Padres lineup has been really good. They've really been letting me down, though. I I was really high on the Cardinals in the Padres last night. The Cardinals went out there and got the job done. We had, you know, uh, Nolan Arenado hit home run, and I had Goldschmidt. They all had pretty decent games, and then I had a full-on San Diego Padres stack late night, and they just did nothing. So um, how does that affect our decisions tonight? Probably nothing at all. Probably shouldn't let that bias uh, get to our numbers here, but... Um, no implied run total release yet. That's because the Padres haven't announced their starting pitcher, so the Vegas is going to hold back on this this data. But he does have 28.9% K overall to right. He strikes out a lot of right-handed batters, but the, the, over 500 slugging on both sides of the plate in a, a San Diego Padres team that really rakes. So um, no issues with the Padres stack tonight. I think that they're going to be a good one uh, for sure. Jorge Lopez taking on the Seattle Mariners. The Seattle Mariners have just been real bad. I honestly think Jorge Lopez can probably limit them. So I'm not really looking to go there. Anthony K taking on Oakland. I'm definitely going to have some interest in this spot. Uh, Left-handed pitcher taking on the Oakland Athletics. I'm always going to have interest in because the Oakland Athletics would just do a really good job of raking off those left-handed pitchers. This guy gives up a 390 slugging overall to righties, a 564 slugging to lefties. So actually really, really struggles against left-handed hitting. The grab ball and the fly ball stuff hasn't been the worst against righties, and the slugging isn't the worst either. Um, over 38 innings pitch, but I will say this kid just doesn't really scare me overall like I think that we could definitely target him with these Oakland A's bats and as mentioned they just are a team that's designed to really hit left-handed pitching well Mark Canna, Ramon Laureano, Sean Murphy, Matt Chapman, Jed Lowry, Stephen Piscotti I'm gonna have interest in all of them and then if you're telling me that Anthony K struggles against lefties love to hear it because I can throw the big bat of Matt Olson in the four spot in my lineup and feel pretty confident as well they have a 4.41 implied run total I definitely think they're gonna be a good stack today and then you got the same issue going on with the uh, other side of the game. Toronto taking on Cole Irvin, another left-handed pitcher. Gives up a lot of hard contact, a 42.4% hard contact rate. Uh, his numbers are looking a lot worse than Anthony Kay's, actually, and he has a larger sample size, 72 innings pitch. Um, gives up the most hard contact on the slate, a 42.4% hard contact rate. Not good. A 421 slugging to righties, and then a 583 slugging given up to lefties. Similar situation. Really sucks against left-handed bats, actually, and he's not good against righties. Uh, and he's taking on a Toronto lineup. It's going to be a tough matchup for him. They only have a 4.09 implied run total. I think Irvin's been pretty good on the season, but to be honest, I think that there could be some, uh, you know, reverse regression, some things that catch up to him based upon these numbers. And if there's ever a lineup that's going to get to him, it would be this Toronto Blue Jays lineup. George Springer, Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Teoscar Hernandez, Randall Gritchick, Marcus Semien, Lourdes Gariel. Every single one of those guys that I just mentioned hits left-handed pitching very well. In the bottom of the order, and Espinel and Jansen, not the greatest, but they're going to have runners on. They should have opportunities, so if you need the salary relief at the bottom of the order, I'm going to like them as well. So, um, The 4.09 implied run total, I'm not sure that I'm agreeing with Vegas on that one. I think this is a good spot for these uh, Toronto Blue Jays. So, uh, Moving further along, we got Alex Cobb taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. He has some major reverse splits issues. He gives up a 573 slug in the righties. However, he's been really, really good this year. Uh, I'm not sure I'm trying to target him all that much, but the Tampa Bay Rays do have an elite hitter and Randy Arozarena at the top of the order. That's a right-handed bat that I do think you could definitely be playing today based upon those numbers. Um, you know, going to be hard to ignore that for sure. Um, and then we do have a... 
Yeah, as I'm going along here, I was I had a question for myself. The, the Rockies game isn't going to be featured on the slate. I just wanted to double check on that one. All right, so um, yeah, that's who really like I I don't know. Looking, I always like to give you guys some specific splits targets as well. And looking at that, we could look at uh, Huascar Yanoa, who gives up a 5.46 slugging to right-handed bats. Really struggles against right-handed bats. He's probably going to be the last one that we're really looking to uh, target on the slate today with those right-handed bats for Washington. And they do have quite a few uh, right-handed bats. They also have quite a few lefties, though, so it's kind of a nice blend. But um, guys like Josh Harrison, Starlin Castro, Victor Robles might be interesting options for you to be playing in tournaments. And I also do want to mention Domingo Herman in the Yankee Stadium taking on Houston. Does give up quite a bit of slugging to left-handed hitting. A 470 slugging, 39.8% hard hit rate, 44.2% fly ball rate, and a 33.7% crown ball rate. Um, those numbers are less than impressive and uh, could have some issues against these Houston left-handed bats in Yankee Stadium. Guys like Michael Brantley, Jordan Alvarez, and Kyle Tucker. Um, definitely some interesting plays today. And yeah, that is my overall breakdown of this slate today. Before I let you guys go, i got to give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it. And my home run call of the day today is going to be Reese Hoskins taking on Eric Lauer. I mentioned giving up a lot of hard contact. His numbers haven't been so bad on the season, but I think it's going to catch up to him in this one. Taking on a Philadelphia Phillies team that can really slug lefties, and most notably Reese Hoskins gives up a 407 slugging, 41.5% hard contact rate against those right-handed bats with a 36.6% ground ball rate and 41% fly ball rate. Going to be plenty of opportunity to get the ball in the air. When looking at his pitching, typically on average, he's going to throw between a 90 to 92 mile an hour fastball. And against lefties, Reese Hoskins features a 200 ISO with a 396 Wobo against that pitch. And as far as his secondary pitches, he'll love to break out the curveball, the cutter, and the slider. Most notably, the curveball and the cutter. Reese Hoskins has a 308 ISO off the curveball against left handed pitching. And the cutter is not an issue either. A 250 ISO, and lastly, the slider. We're not worried about Reese Hoskins not hitting either a 333 ISO with a 413 Woba. Love this spot for Reese Hoskins. Get him in your lineups because he is my home run call of the day. So there you have it, guys. Reese Hoskins, he's going deep tonight. Get him in your lineups. And that is all for me in this one. If you enjoyed the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That would be greatly appreciated. All those things are going to help me with the YouTube algorithm. And then don't forget to leave some comments down below. Anything, your favorite plays, some hot takes. Leave me some feedback on the home run call if we have to pull the e-break on the player not being in the lineup. Any suggestions you have, all of the above, and just any input you have on the slate i always love to hear from you guys and that is all for me check out the premium content link below in the description if interested wish you guys all the best of luck tonight and we will see you in the next one